Welcome to my lounge. I just wanted to make a quick knee-jerk response to Jay Draper's video on the slave trade. It was an excellent video. I sat silent through all of it. It's probably the best video I've ever seen on the slave trade. And I think more people should watch it. It had like 76,000 views. It deserves millions. However, there is one fly in the ointment and it's an important one. And that is that the person that made it is standing in a glass house. And I say this because the next video that came up recommended to me by YouTube was actually a TikTok video. Now, TikTok is a Chinese company. And if you know about China, you'll know that China has a terrible human rights record. And it really matters because the young lady that made this video cares deeply about human rights. She also cares about what people in the future might think looking back on us and what we were focused on and what we didn't care about. And you will find that most people in this country don't think much about China, don't know much about China. And what they do know is a little bit hazy and a little bit confused. They tend to think, well, you know, we shouldn't really be criticising China too much because we have our own problems. And that might be her position. But if that's the case, then maybe we shouldn't care about the slave trade because the past is a different country. So let me tell you a little bit about China because I actually lived there from 2005 for eight years on and off. And... I got to know the place really well, particularly what the Chinese care about, why they are the way they are and what they're doing. And they have a hegemonic agenda. They want to dismantle uh, West, the Western world order. I realise that many people, particularly on the left in this country, sympathise with that agenda, perhaps secretly. And... Maybe that would be okay. There's no particular reason why, you know, we should always be on top, as it were, empires rise and fall. But <clears throat> the trouble is, is that China um, is, is showing no signs of um, becoming a democracy, it, or, or indeed improving its human rights record. It's in fact getting worse. And in China, it's always been the case that you can be made to disappear without your family knowing where you are and held in detention indefinitely and tortured um, and possibly given life-changing injuries. And this is because there isn't separation of powers in China. Um, there isn't justice as we would see it, but also China has a problem with its frontier regions. Um, although um, China is, you know, is mostly Han, it's, it's I think, more than 95% Han. Um, the Han come from the core of China, the sort of civilization that was centered around the Yellow River. And places like Manchuria, Inner Mongolia, Xinjiang, Tibet, those are these huge frontier regions that were occupied by people that are not Han and had their own culture and their own language. Um, and in the news recently, we've, we've been learning about Xinjiang. Now, they've been oppressed for many, many years. I remember speaking to, to somebody in 2007, a Vega person that came up to me and started telling me about it. But that was, um, well... 16 years ago but 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 most people maybe have just heard it in the last one or two years because um it's got so bad there that the world has find it found it difficult to turn away uh they have people in their tens of thousands possibly more being incarcerated in camps but worse than that Parents are being separated from children. Uh, people are being raped, tortured, 
electrocuted, I mean by tortured, um, beaten, and perhaps worst of all, their culture is being eroded. What's happening in Xinjiang, I don't think is as bad as what was happening in uh, Germany in the Second World War, because they're not killing these people, as far as I'm aware, for the most part, but they are erasing their culture. They are trying to turn them into good little Chinese communists with no awareness of their history. Um, and China also is doing a lot of stuff in the world, not just within its borders, but externally. In fact, um, let me deal with Hong Kong first, because Hong Kong is, is a region that was guaranteed independence for 50 years from 1997, and the, um, the Chinese government reneged on that, and Hong Kong is very rapidly coming into um, Beijing's orbit. Uh, and I want to make a quick point about that. Um, at the time this was happening, the Guardian covered this quite extensively, the, you know, the, the, the umbrella process and so on, but they did not object to it in any of their editorials. They just covered it. And when the British government offered sanctuary to Hong Kong citizens, rather late in the day, but nonetheless, a very magnanimous gesture, um, the Guardian criticised it. Uh, it was a Simon uh, Tis Tisdall, I think his name is, uh, opinion piece, which is quite remarkable, isn't it? But you can check it for yourself. Um, so that's what I mean by, by sympathy on the left for China. And you see a lot of that. You see the Guardian will sort of run tokenistic articles highlighting some human rights problems in China, but also they'll do a lot of stuff going the other way. Um, but I digress. We want to, we want to talk about the, ex the external behavior of China now. The export of fentanyl to America causing a huge drug problem in America, drug running, money laundering, um, mafia, a, a Chinese mafia in Canada, um, bribing politicians in Australia to try and control the um, Australian parliamentary system, infiltrating the New Zealand parliamentary system, um, the IP theft, <laughs> Chinese IP theft, if you go down that rabbit hole, it's, you know, you'll never climb back out of it. It's absolutely eye-watering. Uh, China was let into the WTO, I think around 2001. Um, and ever since then, they've had, uh, we've, we've had a distinctly uneven uh, playing field, probably before then as well. There was invest there's been investment in China since the late 80s, I think, if not before. So um, the situation with China is, is that if you want to do business in China, you have to go into a joint venture um, you know, to get a feel of the market and, you know, to get assistance. But of course, what they do is, is they just take everything uh, that you know, and then they dispense with you. Um, but we don't do that to China if they do business here. Um, and they also make it impossible for many companies to do business in China if they can just copy you straight off the bat. So social media companies like YouTube and Twitter, they've been banned in China for many years. Isn't it absurd how recently, very late in the day, America has sort of started to make these tiny steps towards banning TikTok? You know, oh, we'll, we'll ban it in our government. I mean, if it's worth banning in the government, it's worth banning in the whole country, surely. I mean, it's ridiculous, but OK, so they ban it in the government and China goes ballistic and the the Western media don't say, well, hold on, what, what you, YouTube's been banned in China since 2008. You know, it's ridiculous. <laughs> I mean, but that's, the, you know, that is the situation. China is fighting effectively a cold war against the West. And you can bet your bottom dollar. They knew full well that Ukraine was about to be invaded by Russia. Putin went to see Xi Jinping, um, you know, the, just before it happened. And also the Chinese foreign minister was effectively um, t talk, was talking about it in December when um, Russia started 
to surround Ukraine, not directly, but saying how um, uh, Russia, you know, Russia and China had an unlimited friendship. They were going to be, you know, standing shoulder to shoulder against um, Western uh, hegemony. So we in the West have a very real problem with Iran and Russia, certainly, but primarily with China. Um, however, I, I appreciate that this, this lady probably does not care uh, about that uh, so much. But if you care, if you really care about human rights, there is no way that you would have TikTok on your phone. There's no way that you would help to enrich China. Because if you are enriching China, you are helping it to prosecute its war. You are helping it to grow economically. And that effect, and China uses the money that goes into its economy to bolster its defense, to, to bolster its espionage, to bolster its um, cyber attacks, to bolster its long-term view to subverting our power and to, to rendering us effectively as uh, as puppet states and that might seem ridiculous and they hope it sounds ridiculous because they don't um, explicitly advertise this but if you actually live in China for many years it's kind of obvious you know it's all very well you talking about white nationalists and um, how they are dog whistling accent or you, you actually say you don't know what they mean you don't think they're racist of course you think they're racist you begin your video by being disingenuous you know that these people are less comfortable with black people than they are with white people um, but you don't actually have the courage of your convictions and come out and say that um, but they are probably to a certain degree a little bit racist and you put them straight on slavery, and that's fantastic. It's a shame that you didn't talk about white slavery as you said you did. Instead, you set up a straw man, you know, a, an argument that's easy to demolish, um, talking about um, so-called Irish slaves, um, when you could have talked about uh, real white slavery. However, um, what you said about black slavery was, you know, it was very important, and that should be integral to our education. But you made it sound like you really cared about what's going on in the world and how we should be aware of it and we should not be influenced by people around us, um, but, but should be, a be able to think for ourselves. And then I discover that you're on TikTok.